Well, it's raining out and I should be editing videos, but anyways, been a lot of lawnmowers dropped off to fix today. They're all over the place. Guess everybody else had nothing else better to do. Well, all the other ones were just carburetors and pull starts, so they were pretty simple. But this six horsepower Briggs and Stratton Murray mower has a problem that isn't as common anymore. It has poor compression. How I know that? Well, when I pull the pull cord, it doesn't feel that great. Secondly, the way you know for sure, I took the muffler off just to make the sound more obvious, is a ch ch sound every time the exhaust releases. So I'm going to pull it. So you can hear that ch ch. Well, that tells you you got a burnt exhaust valve, so I'm going to show you now how to fix it. When the muffler's off, there's the exhaust port and there's the valve cover thing. You have to remove those two screws to get access to the valve springs. Then you have to remove the cylinder head next. Well, now you can see the valve springs. They're easy to remove. You just get a flat screwdriver there and pry on that metal disc on a crooked way. And it's got a figure eight hole in it and it'll cause it to release the spring. Symptoms of a lawnmower in this condition are very hard to start, or every time they start, they sort of just pop, 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 and die, pop, 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 die. Or once you do get them running, they only have a little bit of power under high RPMs, and every time you try to slow them down, they stall out. And of course, increased fuel consumption. Well, now I've got the head unbolted, so I've already released the spring. So now let's get the exhaust valve out. Simple as that. Well, how to tell if an exhaust valve is burnt or where it's burnt. If you look at the tapered edge, it looks shiny in most places. Then you see, like you're looking at now, a dull spot, then shiny, dull. Well, that's a valve that's warped and starting to burn. While you have everything apart, clean off the valve seat and check its condition too. On models of Briggs and Stratton lawnmowers from 1984 to 1988, they had a really big problem with the steel valve seat releasing itself from the head and flopping around. It would give the same funny ch -ch exhaust sound, but the engine's unrepairable. Every time the valve closes, the seat just moves around and it doesn't seal very well, so you have to use those motors for parts. Luckily, I have another scrap motor laying around, so I've got a motor to take the valve out of. This one was a good motor, except it's got a bent crankshaft. Anyone want some head? No questions asked? Simple as that. Now this other valve looks really good. It's got a shiny, smooth face all the way around. But what I always do before I reinstall a valve into a different motor is I grind a little bit off this end to allow a little bit more valve clearance. Sometimes these burn out just because there's no valve clearance and so the valve is being held partly open while it's running. The flame shoots past and that burns the valve. So grind a few thousandths off that and we're guaranteed no problems in the future. Well, when you're installing a used valve on another motor you want to clean all the crud off it. So you polish up the face and clean the ceiling surface really well. I've already ground off a little bit off the end on the other side over here. Now I've got some valve grinding compound which is like grease mixed with grits and a little suction cup that I stick onto this surface. Make sure there's no oil on the top of the valve or on the suction cup and that the valve is very polished clean and then stick the suction cup to the valve like so. That's what my oily grits looks like. Now I have to apply some to the tapered surface of the valve or the angle surface but not very much. There I got a little bit of that shit on. 
Now after you've wiped the oil and crap off the valve seat, which is that, stick this back in the hole and rotate the engine to TDC compression position so it's not trying to lift the valve open. Then insert all the way down. I've removed the spring around the valve just to show what I mean. When I push this valve all the way down now, it's not actually touching that little thing that's called the lifter. And when you, I spin it, you hear the grinding sounds showing, telling me that it's uh, resurfacing the seat to fit the valve and seal well. But when I do it, I use two hands and go back and forth like this, like I'm trying to start a fire with a bow and arrow or something. So that's my next step. While you're spinning this thing back and forth, you should be putting a bit of pressure against it at the same time. So it's wearing the metals together, making it seal better. And you keep moving it out, and that redistributes the greasy grits. So that's how you lap and seat a valve with full compression. You might want to do this for like about five minutes. Well, when you think you've got this uh, ground together enough, or lapped or seated, whatever you want to call it, you pull it out, you wipe all the shit off of the valve and off of the seat and check that the valve has an equal smooth shiny ring around it. Uh, the seat doesn't have any darker black spots where it hasn't made a contact. Make sure it's always shiny all the way around too. Then you know you've done the job and it's done good enough and you can put it back together. So, as you can see, the seat is all cleaned off now and it's got a nice smooth shiny ring. And it's got that all the way around. My valve has got the same mark on it, so now they're perfectly sealing. I can reassemble. Well, now for the trickiest part. I used two small flat screwdrivers to try to manipulate that washer with the figure eight hole in it to get the valve spring clip back on. Everything else after this will be easy. Well, that only took me 20 seconds to get it back on. Now just recenter the spring around the shaft of the valve stem, and that's it. Put it all back together. Well, now it's time to give your lawnmower some head, and then let's fire this pig up. Cool. Well, when putting all your bolts back in, tighten them down in three stages oppositely. So I'll tighten this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, and then corner to corner, corner to corner. You do it that way pretty much on all flathead engines. And now to try to start this lawn more after I've got the valve job done. Couple primes. Yeah, let's see. No problem. Notice it didn't make the chit 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 sound anymore because now it's got good compression. Feels like the shaft's a bit bent, so it kind of rattles the body a bit, but other than that, the customer will be happy.